Hey, welcome to JG3 Reviews. My name is James and I review fountain pens, ink, and paper and all those related things. And today I've got, as you can see, because I can't talk without my hands, a fountain pen. This may look a lot to you like the Parker I am, but it is not. You will notice that there is a Hero logo on this. It is the 8007. When I bought this, I was not yet as familiar as I am now with the Parker I am. And so I didn't really catch the resemblance at first. This is also a Hero, by the way. I just like both finishes. Uh, and I, I actually, once I realized that, I, I just kind of put these aside and I wasn't going to go ahead and review it. And then, I was looking back over the Parker IM itself and in doing that, noticed uh, a couple of comments about it in different reviews and just comments from people who have the pen. And some of the complaints about the IM actually seem to be answered in the Hero 8007. And I thought, you know, maybe I do want to review that and talk about that a little bit. So that's what we're going to do today. This is the Hero 8007 in two different lacquers, as I said, in a fine uh, steel nib. And we're going to flip the camera and look at the design overview, talk about some of the similarities and differences between it and that Parker pen. And then we'll do a writing test and I will tell you what I think overall of this pen. So let's flip that camera and take a closer look. Okay, so here is the Hero 8007. We have just above the band, the name in English and Chinese and the logo. There in the center we have that very familiar arrow clip, just a little bit differently stylized from some other pens you may have seen, and a very large uh, gold looking Finial. And this is probably the one thing besides the Parker type clip that makes you think of the Parker IM. I think actually if they had not gone with this finial, which I guess they did on purpose, but if they had not, you might not ever really connect the two pins. One of the things that stands out from uh, the two designs is this lacquer. And this is actually why I bought the pin. Uh, I did not wasn't a, even aware of, of the similarities at the time that I bought this. I've had it a while, uh, bought both of them at the same time and have had them a while. Uh, but the lacquer is what actually caught my eye and it's actually one of those things that is different. Now this is the blue, very nicely done. It does have a nice depth to that color and it just, I think, that is really nice. I almost didn't buy it because of all the, I'm not a gold trim person on a pen for the most part, and so a big old uh, knobby bit of gold at the top is really not my thing. That would be part of the design of both pens that I would say I really don't care for, and that's just a preference matter of taste thing. I just think it's unnecessary to have that much material up there. This end, of course, looks fine. If they'd done the same treatment at both ends, well, then I guess you'd have the Amazon pen, wouldn't you? <laughs> It would look just like that. Uh, this is the red lacquer, which I also think is striking. And uh, I liked that too. I, I just, if I was going to buy the one, I was going to buy them both. And you can see, I think in this light, that there is a really nice depth and shading to that lacquer as you turn the pen. And it's really nicely done. And I think the gold looks good with, with the red and the blue. I just think there's way too much of it at the top. And like I said, that's actually the characteristic that they share is that big, great big gold notch at the top of the, the cap of the finial. Other than that, very simple design, uh, really not a lot to talk about there because it's, other than the, the one thing that I, that I didn't like, everything else is just pretty standard, run of the mill, nice office fountain pen, kind of design, nothing that really stands out there. And I think that's actually one of the criticisms of of the Parker IM that would carry over to the Hero, and that is that there is a bit of boringness to the design. And uh, I don't know, that doesn't always bother me. It's I, In this particular case, I would actually rather that only go to about there and it be a little bit more typical and boring. I think it would be a, a better looking pen, but I really do like these colors. And so, you know, Parker ought to borrow back 
the the colors of these pins. Let's look at we'll look at the blue one from here on out because these pins are otherwise identical, same nib and everything else. So we open that up and it is a, just snaps and it has a good snick to it. It caps very securely and solidly. Uh, there's a little bit of turn, but a lot of friction. Just really secure cap. I know that's important detail for some. There is, I don't think I have good enough lighting in here to show you, but there is a little bit of a, a liner in there, I believe. Let's look at the nib. The nib is a normal number five two-tone hero nib that says Genius Iridium. It is not just an iridium point nib. It is a genius iridium nib. I have I have no idea what that means. Its its intelligence is above me. Uh, but one of the the criticisms of the IM is that it has uh, a metal section. This is a matte colored. Uh, you don't really feel the matte texture, but you you can see it that it looks kind of matte. But it's plastic, and so it's not actually. All that slippery. So some people, if you don't like the metal on the other pin, this is actually an improvement. And that's actually the interesting thing about this pin to me. The things that people tend to complain about the IM, that it's boring. Well, this is still kind of boring, but I think the color actually gives it more interest than it would uh, otherwise have if it were just in black and silver and, and whatever. Uh, the gold contrasted section, which is the same on both pins. I think that looks all right, but since it's plastic, it actually has better grip than a smooth metal would be. And um, the nib on the older IMs, it seems to me, I don't own one, so I'm having to go by what I see on the internet, that they may have changed the nib later, later on and made it a little bit larger, but the older IMs was short and there were people who didn't like that. Well, this is still a small nib. I think this would be better with a thicker section and a number six, but you know, I do think the number five suits it just fine. I think the two-tone looks fine. Um, it's just, I would say the nib is an average, still quality nib. There's nothing that really endears me to it more than other nibs. Uh, nothing that uh, just makes me think I should toss it either. It's just kind of a standard run-of-the-mill steel nib. Uh, it is something you could swap out with a number five that would fit this pin, and then maybe you would have other possibilities. But as far as this one, it's it's a nib and it works and, and it's fine. So, you know, that's nothing to write home about really. You take this off, one thing about it, it will come with a converter because it is a Chinese fountain pen and they are better than we are uh, in the US at supplying converters with their pens. Now this is, again, just a standard plastic converter. Uh, nothing special about that either, whether it will last longer or even as long as some others, I could not tell you. I haven't had trouble with it, but it's nothing spectacular. It is just a normal, everyday converter. So all the rest of the pen, the nib, the converter, the way that it writes, if you have a Hero pen, you kind of know uh, how this pen is going to write and whether your experience has been good or bad. But the design is, of course, very similar to that other. I'll just go ahead and uncap the other pen just so you can see how the red contrasts. I really like the red color on this. So as I said, pretty much the same as the blue, except, you know, red. And there you go. That's the design. If you have an IM, it's very familiar. If uh, you have problems with things being straight copies, I will say this, it's not a straight copy. Uh, you will, at first, if you just, if you see this, you certainly think so. However, you've got a, a different styled nib. You've got a different section. Uh, they're, they've, they've differentiated it, you know, by 10%, let's say, 10, 15%. Uh, but they've made it, I think, a little bit more appealing by offering more interesting colors as long as they aren't uh, overbearing and, and bold in your eye. But I do like both this red and this blue, but none of that matters if the pen can't write. So let's look at the writing sample and then we'll get to whether or not I think this is worth the few bucks that you'll pay for it. Okay, let's check this pin out. I did forget to tell you it does post quite well and securely. No problem there and uh, maybe a little bit heavy there that way but not not bad at all. So let's try this pin out. It is again the Hero and is the 8 whoops, zero, zero, 
seven. This is a fine nib, and I would say that's how it writes, you know, a typical Chinese fine. And this is Noodler's Black, and this is one of their eel inks. So that will give you some idea how that writes. I'm going to be quiet and let you hear this. It is a pretty smooth nib, at, at least on this paper. This paper is uh, not quite as smooth in the way it sounds as, say, a Rhodia paper, but it is quite a smooth paper. It's just a different kind of paper fiber. Wetness, not too bad. And then, uh, let's see here. I find the pen comfortable enough. The balance is fine, even capped. Maybe a little bit back heavy for some, just because this is a, a metal pen under that lacquer. So it's, it's got a bit of weight. Now let's see here. What do I say the pen, let me do some pros and cons. Pros first. I'm going to say one is price. I will just get that one out of the way. And I just paid a few bucks. So it's just kind of a $1 sign pen. And I will put a link in the description. I've had it for a while. So I'm going to put a link in the description to cover the exact price because uh, it may well have changed since I've gotten this pen. It's been a little while. The other is uh, construction. In its class, and what would its class be? Uh, Chinese pens that are metal with lacquer. There are a lot of those with kind of a standard number five nib. You know, there are Jin Hao's Wing Sung's, Heroes, Bowers. There are all kinds of pens in that same price class made of similar materials. In its class, its construction is good. Its price is fair. Uh, not, not a bad pen that way. Other pros, I'm going to say that lacquer, and that's a matter of taste, of course, but I like both the red and the, uh, the blue in this pen. Now, those are the only ones I have. I know they make black and silver, and I don't know. I'll put a picture up. I can't remember what all is available. And again, because some things have changed, and so I'll just I'll put the most recent photo I can find up. Those are the things that I like. It does have a smooth nib. Hero, uh, I've had good experience with several Hero pens. Every now and then, I'm more, I do feel like I'm just maybe 10% more likely to run into a nib that might need a little bit of tuning with Hero than I am with uh, Jin Hao or the nicer Wing Songs. But this, the, I have done nothing to this one uh, at all. And it writes very well, smooth, flow is good, all that good stuff. Cons. Let's see here. I think the first one that I have to put is the similarity of the design. You know, uh, I suppose there are people who would look at that as a reason to get it. If, if I wanted the design, particularly because it was like the Parker, I would get the Parker. The Parker I am is not an expensive pen anyway, so just, you know, get the Parker if that's the deal. If you want it to look like one, you want people to think you have one, have one. Uh, if you're just looking for an inexpensive pen, looks, uh, you know, the looks are okay with it, and you, ju you just want a good pen that writes, well then, then that would be a positive. But I'm going to count that as a negative. Um, let, me, I, let me go back to a, a, a pro. Uh, there is some improvement to some to some eyes. Uh, some people think that, that this one might be, I didn't realize that was off camera, sorry, uh, that this might actually make some improvements to the IM. Probably not enough to sway those minds. That's going to be my guess. Uh, but to be fair, uh, some of the things that they did differently, I think they also did a little better. Not, not world-shakingly better, but a little 
better. Uh, this is going to be, I'm even going to underline this because that just, you know, you know how that goes. Other cons. Uh, as I just mentioned, this nib is good, but uh, the nibs sometimes, not always, sometimes uh, hit and miss. So just kind of know that going in. Not terribly hit and miss, and not, not a majority of the time or half the time, just a little bit of the time. You're going to get one that might be uh, a little bit off. Uh, you know, other than that, I would just say uh, weeks to order. You know, you're going to have to order this thing directly uh, from China, and that is slow right now, and I think it's fair to put that on a con for any pen that's not available uh, by quicker means, at least here in the U.S. Now, maybe where you are, this one does not matter. Anything else? Uh, not really. I think anything else would just be a preference thing. So let's get down to it. With these pros and cons, do I like this pen? I like the colors of this pen. I like both the blue and the red lacquer. I've said that. Uh, those would be my biggest draw. Uh, the fact that they use a standard number five nib. If you're somebody who likes to swap nibs, that's going to be a plus, and so maybe you would like that. Um, easily available, you know, uh, if you're willing to wait for those weeks to get it. And, uh, you know, not a bad pen. I think it's going to last a while. They seem sturdy, uh, well put together, and at a good price. Does it wow me? No, the colors do, but not the pen overall. Uh, but, you know, do I recommend it? I think if you like the design, I think if you uh, are looking for a real bargain and a pen that's going to be a good writer, mine has been a reliable writer, then yeah, I would, I would recommend that. Um, if you're just looking to get something that looks like an IM, that's probably an odd thing to do. But if you are, buy, buy the IM. That would be my recommendation. Uh, and I have awesome luck with, even though I can't say for the IM, but with my Jotter, which is here for a size comparison, uh, with my Vector and other Parkers that I've written with, I have tremendously good luck. So... You know, I would, if I, if it was all about the nib, not looks or price or shipping or anything like that, I, I would go with the Parker. Another pen for size comparison, I have handy a Caveco Perkeo or Perkeo, however you want to say that on a Tuesday. And I have a uh, Lamy Studio, which is actually really similar in size. Uh, they don't have a whole lot else in common except, you know, different colors but similar uh, ends to the barrel and very similar diameters and similar weight, uh, but not similar in really in, in any other uh, way except that they're both fountain pens. But size-wise, that gives you a good idea of what you're looking at. So, so uh, let's wrap up. Is it a good pen? I think at the price, it is a decent pen. If you like the lacquer, I'd say go for it. If you're looking for something uh, that is just kind of a classic boring pen, maybe you want one uh, that's in that price range, but then is not just, you know, a, a plain plastic pen, then I would say go for it. If you want something that is, uh, maybe has a, looks like this, but has a better nib, then definitely uh, save up and buy your Parker. And uh, that would be my rec recommendation. Otherwise, you know, you make up your own mind. Uh, I, I reviewed you decide. Those are just that's just my take. God bless you. I hope that you're staying safe and that you're having a great start to your new year. And I will see you in the next review.